Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Before I get into today's subject matter, I want to say thank you to everybody out there who engaged in the channel in the last week. You brought this channel up from 96 subscribers to 206 subscribers as of the recording of this video. You had insane engagement on the last videos, fantastic conversations, and you hit that like button more than I've ever seen. One video on this channel surpassed everything the channel has ever done in three days. So thank you all so much to everybody out there who decided to check this channel out and support it in the ways that you have. That was so humbling to see. I, 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 go to bed and I'd wake up in the morning and it just kept going and that's because of everybody out there so thank you so much for doing that I I really can't say it enough you guys have been absolutely amazing but without any further ado I want to talk about the rip reverse and one of the code of ethics that he has and it has to deal with a certain thing that they're not going to do, and that's time travel and multiverses. So let's get into it. All right, here from the Ripperverse.com, because I gotta have it up here. Canon and continuity. Our aspirations extend far beyond having a couple of characters, a series, a vast universe ever expanding is what we hope to accomplish. This is something that has been uh, that has long been intriguing about modern American comic books, but it has become the lost a lost art. The Ripperverse will fill this void. This means that every single book you buy will always matter. If retcons are to exist, they will only be used in the classic sense of introducing new information. We want every book that you buy to always matter. Those stories happen. There will be no lazy time travel to change history or events. There will be no cheap multiverses that have altered versions of the same characters. If you own a book, you own part of that history, and it's our mission to keep it this way. This concept will remain true regardless of the median. Should the characters appear in officialized animation or live action, the depictions need to be as accurate to the characters as realistically possible. Your favorite characters will always be recognized. Now, there was a comment in one of our video, uh, in the uh, the first um, uh, Ripperverse video that we did, the, the one that you guys just blew up like crazy. And in that video, or in, in that comment, they were saying, well, weren't, they weren't sure if removing time travel and removing multiverses off the bat was really a good idea. Uh, my response to that was I thought it was decently a good idea because what it does is it actually takes uh, a, 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 a writing out for a lot of writers who are fairly lazy in today's modern day and age. And it makes them able to be lazier, right? If they screw up on something, if they don't know about the story, or if they just want to change something real quick, they can just rely on time travel or they can rely on <clears throat> multiverses to fix it. Now, I have a very specific issue when it comes to time travel, less of an issue when it comes to multiverses. Uh, and then I have a greater opinion on the whole thing. So my greater issue with time travel is... There are very, very few times when time travel can be executed and executed well. I'm going to give a very famous example. The one time that it was executed well was Back to the Future. I mean, that's the quintessential time travel movie, right? It was Back to the Future. The issue that I have with time travel as a writing tool or as a writing storyline is that even if people do it well, they seem to think that they have to come up with some, the, 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 like the real world scientific theories of it. And because they don't really know about it, the writers can be like, well, you know, time travel is this complicated thing. I don't like that. If you're going to do time travel, you need to, as a writer, say, look, we're doing time travel. We get to come up with the rules of time travel for our universe. And when we do that, that's how the time travel is going to be. Most of the time, this doesn't happen. Okay. So if you're going to do time travel in a book series or a movie or whatever, 
it's got to follow a lot of rules. For instance, that's what broke Endgame for me. Endgame is a trash tier movie. I don't care what you say. And I, I just, Endgame was not a good movie. It had two good parts in it for me. That's it. Uh, comment down below if you think you know what the two good parts are or disagree with me. That, the, do that too. And I will do my best to respond to everybody as much as possible. But time travel tends to be this idea, and there, there are scientific theories that haven't been proven. Obviously, we can't prove time travel, and we can't prove alternate dimensions and multiverses and all that scientifically. And when you can't do that, it gives the writers a lot of wiggle room to be like, well, you know, it's complicated, right? Which I've already said. If time travel is to be done, strict rules have to be in place that can't alter the, the, the previous continuity, okay? When you start giving the writers an out like that, and you don't say, here are the strict guidelines if we write a story like this, then the a lot of writers, especially in the modern day, will use it as some wishy-washy way to retcon a character however they want to. I will say this, I don't mind time travel as a way to kind of learn about the past or learn about something that had happened. There were a few episodes in the series of Supernatural where time travel didn't retcon the series. It just simply brought the characters back to a previous time, introduced new concepts, showed something new, uh, showed limitations to like the angels, like one of the first times they did it and so on and so forth. I thought some of that stuff was fairly interesting. Now, by that point in time, Supernatural had kind of, it was on the lackluster side of things. It was it was getting to the lackluster side. I think it was season four or season five when they first introduced it. As they did more time travel later on, it got garbage. Um, moving over to the multiverses. Multiverses are really interesting if done properly. One of my personal favorite movies that has multiverses in it is the one with Jet Li. I know some people are like, oh, that's a little bit of a campy thing and so on and so forth. But I felt like at least in that movie, there was a solid idea of the rules of the multiverse, how it's going to work, what direction they were going to go with it, how people uh, were connected in that multiverse, such as the same version of yourself in another multiverse. I, I liked that concept. It had solid rules. They didn't decide to break those rules in that movie, at least as far as I know, but it's an action movie. I'm an action movie guy like Jason Statham, Jet Li. Like, come on, let's go. Like, freaking awesome. And then they teamed up later to be in The Expendables. So, um, but when you have multiverses that just say, oh, hey, we can change the character to just be whatever. It doesn't matter. Like this character, this superhero, it, they, they might not even exist in another multiverse. That's a problem because then you start breaking into the character continuity and how you know that character to be. And you basically say, well, we just want to use the name of this character while writing a completely different character. We've absolutely seen that with stories and the modern comic books. Um, again, as I have said in the past, I'm more of a comic book student than I am a uh, comic book fan, meaning that I seek out and I listen to the long form story arcs of that people have covered uh, on YouTube. I love doing that. I just I didn't have the time and the money when I was younger to uh, to do this stuff. I went right from high school, had a kid when I was 20 years old, bought a house, hit the ground running. You know, money was going other places other than comic books, right? So I'm a comic book student. So I, but that being said, because I'm a student of comic books and I listen to the mythos and listen to the lore, I can see how they've changed a lot of this stuff. And it doesn't make sense with what came before it. Now, if you had solid rules, which in the beginning they kind of did, uh, comics has always been a little wishy-washy with it, but they had more solid rules and said, look, we can't do this, we can't do that. It's kind of like what they, like if you have rules for like a magic system, magic systems can get very complicated very quickly. If you do them right, like in Avatar The Last Airbender, and you follow those magic systems, it, it turns out to be a very, very solid, very, very understandable uh, thing for the viewers to follow along with. When you start to break those magic systems, uh, I'll th find Star Wars. Star Wars broke it. I hate, I hate saying it. It's just been, it's just been beat to hell at this point. But they broke the magic system 
later on in and and some people would even argue that they introduced some things into the magic system of the force under the prequels which i'm a prequel defender um uh, but in the sequels they absolutely destroyed the magic system so there are certain rules that you have to follow when it comes to these things in the universe multiverses get into this idea that there is another universe out there with this person that is just a slightly different like version of that character um, that's why I liked the way that they described it in The One with Jet Li. Again, that's, I love that movie. I don't care. You hit Drowning Pool at the bodies at the floor at the very end, and the evil Jet Li is just kicking dudes off a tower. Like, then you get two Jet Li's fighting each other. I'm sorry. That's, I don't care. It's a great movie. Shut up. Go watch it. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Jet Li is one of the greatest action heroes of all time. One of. But anyway, I digress. <sighs> By Ripa saying, we're not doing this. We're not, and, and he doesn't necessarily say, we're not doing this. Let's pull this up again. He doesn't really say that we're not doing this, right? He's saying that there will be no cheap multiverses and there will be no lazy time travel to change histories or events. He's not saying that there won't be any time travel. He's saying there won't be any time travel to change history or events, blocking the writers in saying, you cannot use this to screw with the continuity from the bible that i've built and then with the multiverses no cheap multiverses that have altered versions of the same character so what he's saying here is we may have a multiverse but we might not have these same characters in that multiverse i don't know if he's saying that or if he's saying something very differently I am of the opinion of if you don't have any time travel and if you don't have any multiverses there it could potentially lead to a natural end point for the story of the character. I'm not necessarily a fan of the never ending characters, right? Now, that being said, I fully recognize by saying this, Superman and Batman may not have continued as long as they have. The Marvel characters may not have continued as long as they have under what I'm saying, because you start getting out, you know, into some of these comic runs that were multiple, multiple, multiple years long. And when they had to retcon and go back to square one, instead of just saying, hey, guys, we told this really fun story with these characters. Uh, it was a great story, but we're going to go back, uh, set back to, uh, uh, you know, the OG. And then we're going to, you know, we're going to tell a new story from there. Instead of people just being honest like that and saying, hey, guys, this is what, you know, we're going to we're going to just reset from square one and go on. Um, but I don't think that that's what Eric even said he's looking to do. He said they may, you know, have to do reboots once in a while, but I don't even know if I agree with that. Again, I think that part of what makes certain stories timeless is that they do have an ending. They do get to a point where they end and they remain in that time period. Lord of the Rings in the books very much did that, you know, for Tolkien. Um, you have, I mean, Beowulf. Beowulf eventually ended. The oldest poem on the planet that we have. It ended. It didn't continue. Now, obviously, this gets, you know, way before that. So maybe I should <laughs> bring more modern versions uh, of, uh, you know, what I'm talking to into it. Um, I mean, when you get into movie series and you start thinking of like the lethal weapon movies which again i'm an action movie guy they had a story that finally ended okay you know these reboots and things like that what tends to destroy these stories is when they try to go for the never-ending story and it rips something out of timelessness and makes it and it oh what's the opposite of timelessness I'm drawing a blank. I just had the word. Comment down below. You know what I mean, though. It's the opposite of timelessness. It's locked into a time. It's it's It'll be irrelevant in five years. I can't remember. I, I just had it. Oh, my God. I'm stupid. Anyway, my stupidity aside, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And I wanted to have this discussion to see what you guys think about. Holy crap. I have gone much longer than I thought I was going to. Hopefully I didn't get too far off in the weeds on all this stuff, but I really feel that Eric July saying, we're not doing this anymore. We're not going to go that way. I really feel that this is a fantastic way to lock the writers in to making sure that the never ending story happens. Now, I don't know 
if Eric July is fine with the never ending story and maybe his characters just keep going on and on and on and on and on and then in 80 years all of a sudden his characters are woke as hell because Eric ain't around no more and you know his kids sold off the company and like I don't know like we, we'll see what happens in 80 years I guess if some of us are still alive but what do you think what do you think do you think there comes a time and a place when a story should end do you think retcons and reboots are okay? Do you like time travel? Do you think it can be done well or is it always bad? How do you feel about multiverses? Can it be done well or do you think it's always bad? I gave a couple of uh, examples here of things that I really think are done well. I mean, again, the quintessential time travel movie is Back to the Future, like bar none, period. That is the quintessential time travel movie. And then, you know, obviously my, the one, Jet Li, Jason Statham, go go watch it you, you need to do that if you don't if you don't do that that's on you that's not on me that's on you anyway i'll cut the video here and i want to thank everybody so much again for the massive support that you showed this microscopic channel that made me feel larger than life and i just can't tell you how much i appreciate it so thank you so much again and if you guys like what we're doing here hit the like button comment down below have that conversation with me tell me i'm stupid and i don't remember and i don't know what the hell i'm talking about and hit the subscribe button if you really like it and if you like it beyond that share it with everybody that you know because maybe they like it too and maybe they think my ramblings here after a long day of work is what they want to hear to wind down for the day but regardless of all of that i look forward to seeing you all next time right here on a drink with crazy peace Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.